This is Twit. <sighs> Speaking of stocks, Apple stock went through the roof when everybody oh. bought on the rumor and then <laughs> the news came out and it went it plummeted a little bit, right? <laughs> but it was uh, it was a very good quarter for their uh, their holiday results, yeah, right? It, it it crushed Wall Street's estimates. If there's a lot of great charts, um, if you if you go to uh, five easy charts and scroll down, um, if you can pull that up, because uh, they they basically beat in every category in every country uh, the highest, the most bullish Wall Street. Uh, estimates uh, got blown away. Uh, and the stock actually didn't go up. <laughs> yeah, here we go. These are interactive. So, for example, quarterly revenue, and then you hit uh, the the up top there next to revenue, the year-over-year -year increase. Then you get to see the percentage change. Is this the right? No, you've got the wrong quarter. Right, this is Maybe really wrong because <laughs> <laughs> this is, this this is, is Q4, this is, which was a crappy yeah, quarter because they didn't have anything. Yeah, their fiscal quarter ends. Uh, I'll go to the front page. It'll probably be in the latest post. Their fiscal quarter ends uh, this quarter, The the uh, or rather, yeah. the, this is Q1. So the fiscal right. quarter Q1. ends in uh, what is December. it? September, and the and and the fiscal, fiscal year, year ends in the... September. So this is the first quarter of their new fiscal year, which is the important one: October, November, December. And it's when the new phones are out, the new Macs are out, the new everything is out. So yeah, let me yeah. let me get you. They your, were a little uh, the, the phones were a little late this year, um, but th that didn't change sales. Um, and China. Which you know, which is very sensitive to a change. They they always want to be able to show off that they have the latest phone. So if the new phone looks like the old phone, they don't want it. Um, they also have China also has a very uh, um, their 5G network is completely deployed, so they're ready for these chips. Um, so and it, yeah, they, they, we don't have to see the charts, but that they, unfortunately. You know, um yeah, maybe I just clicked on the. Or I don't know what's going on here. Maybe you got the wrong maybe, chart in the article. Maybe I got the wrong chart. Well, let's see. Q1. Here they, it is. They, here it, it is. Yeah, it. yeah. You know what? Yeah. I did something wrong. So okay, year so over go. year change. Whoa! It's the biggest ever. Twenty one percent growth from last year to this year. That's their revenue. The next one is earnings per share, which is propped up because they've been. Whenever the stock goes down, they just. Pull buy up more a truck yeah, and yeah. buy more. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to have cash. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then Which, the by the way, revenue. I should. We should. I mean, if we're talking about stock market, I mean, let me ask you, Alex. Uh, when a company hey. buys its own stock, doesn't it kind of artificially pump up the price? Well, it constrains the total uh, shares that are available. It's good and for investors because your your share is worth more, right? Right, because you have the same amount of earnings uh, with fewer shares, so earnings per share go up. Also, keep in mind that companies often compensate their employees uh, with stock. With stock. So there's a kind of a standard, a standard increase in the number of shares that are in the market. So you use some cash to mitigate that, even reduce the number of shares out there. Normally, this is not that big of an impact. Um, IBM over time has paid more money for its stock through repurchases than the company is currently worth. <laughs> so there's some ironic moments out there. Uh, Apple the market. spent hundreds of billions of dollars in buybacks, right? I mean, they, yeah, sure. Yeah. But Apple's worth 2.4 trillion. Right. So, you know, but, but good luck. It, so you that. wouldn't say that that's partly because of the buybacks? It, it is. No. Well, no, it's not, not entirely not. the fundamentals. The, the company's value should be the same regardless of the number of shares. It would just change the per share amount. Well, that's what so I'm saying. You, the per share value. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. stock your stock price went up because you bought a lot of stock. But well, if the, each, uh, each the price share times the number of shares is flat. Right. Yeah. yeah. So okay. your earnings per but, share go up, but your market capitalization doesn't change. In theory. Well, except their market cap has been going up. I mean, they're firing on all cylinders. And uh, I'm not downplaying the Apple stock. I learned my lesson <laughs> about, about eight years ago. I was at Thanksgiving with my dad and my half brother. And I said, oh, you should dump the Apple stock. This actually, no, no, it was 11 years ago. It was after Steve Jobs died. I said, you should dump that Apple stock because it's all over for Apple. <laughs> and Whoops. every Thanksgiving, dad sends me a note saying, I didn't sell it. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong. Does he call you from his helicopter yeah. above his yacht? He drives up in his Rolls Royce and... <laughs> Throws go. it out at the window at me. 
So they, but, yeah, they've obviously done very well for themselves. Yeah, I, I used to hear the guys on CNBC talk about the law of large numbers, which which they had totally wrong because it's about something else entirely. But their theory was that Apple was so big that it couldn't grow double digits anymore because it just gets right. harder. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you saturate the market. Everybody's going to buy an iPhone, got an iPhone. Yeah, but then they want the new one. And also, they, now they're, they're buying the, the watch and they're buying the AirPods and uh, they've got a Mac. And, you know, once you're in the walled garden, uh, boy, uh, I don't want to say this to someone who works for Microsoft, but... Oh, I'm uh, here. I'm an yeah. Apple user. Well, Come on. I'm on an here's... iMac. I, I, I uh, have an Apple Watch. I have an iPhone. I have an iPad. Like Yeah, yeah. She loves Apple. Yeah. There's no question. This is Satya's yeah. Microsoft, not, here... not Bomber's Microsoft. Yeah, right. Very different exactly. That's right. Big difference. Yeah, if, he, if, 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 if Bomber saw you with an iPhone in the audience, he'd take it and stomp on it. Right. Uh, he actually I did that. Worked, I wouldn't have worked at Microsoft then, to yeah, be totally right. honest. No, that's so, right. But yeah. Satya is, wherever our customers are, that's where we'll be. Uh, the big one from the point of view of saturation is services. And you show this year over year. Uh, this has been a very big... Look how steady this growth is in revenue and services. Now $15.8 billion. And that's what Apple's trying to do, right? Is increase the amount of money they make per customer. Both. That, yeah. That's where they, the growth is. They now is. have more than they're more than a billion iPhones out there. <laughs> so any, <laughs> that's just a way to print money. And the, what's different uh, with Apple than Facebook or Twitter is that they have credit cards for each of those people. Uh, Brilliant. So, Brilliant. Uh, they can. Yeah. I buy yeah. stuff with my Apple Card because it's so easy, all the time. Just because it's easy, because it's just a fingerprint away. Horace Daydu had a chart. Uh, he showed that if you Forget the phone and just look at the services and the wearables and stuff right now. And you draw a line. They make about as much money from the wearables and the services as they made from everything in 2012. Right. It's <laughs> That's kind of is kind of amazing. <laughs> Less than 10 yeah. years later. No, I mean, seeing the, ser seeing the services pivot has been really interesting because um, once they stopped reporting numbers of devices sold and really started to pivot into the, the service area for growth, that has very quickly, you know, like ramped up and become a bigger and bigger part of the business. And yeah, it's, it's, un it's unreal. I mean, wearables, obviously, I think the watch massive success when they pivoted that from being about fashion to being about fitness and health was, was huge. But the, I mean, AirPods have been just unprecedented level of success. Um, I, I can't think of anything. I mean, they're kind of like the, the new iPod, you know, if you think about it. So it's it's remarkable to think that a decade ago, they're doing as much revenue just in those two categories as they were doing with everything. And a decade ago, Apple was like most valuable company in the world. So that's, un that's unreal. They, we're, we're very retro this, here because we don't have AirPods on. Uh, Thank goodness. On I see TV them today. on TV all the time. Yeah, it kills me, they're, honestly. They're not good. Non they're not good stop. for this. But let me, let me you guys tell you something. So currently, I have three sets of, of AirPods uh, of varying levels of battery failure. Yes. And so I need to get a new pair. Yes. And I'm going to have four pairs. Yep. I need to buy a new Apple Magic Mouse because I broke mine. Yep. And uh, I need to get an iPad. And I'm just I'm just looking around at my Apple device collection. I'm like, how do I need more of these darn things? And yet I kind of do. And I'm amazed at how much of my money Apple is going to take this year alone because I also want to get an Apple Watch. And I uh, just, I mean, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit. I, I just can't believe how much money I have to give the company, but I do want and need all their stuff. So the thing that I'm encouraged, right, Apple, you win. Well, you said, you said actually they're firing on all cylinders, which is exactly what I take away from this quarter because Mac sales were up best they'd been in a long time. iPad sales were up best they've been practically since the iPad came out, since 2012 anyway. Uh, iPhone sales through the roof. They are every one of their products, services, just doing really, really well. Uh, that's That bodes pretty well for a company. Um, yeah, and, most of their the, money is of still from iPhone, but it used to be like three quarters. It's down to fifty nine percent. I'm looking at uh, right. Jason Snell's. Uh, uh, he does those color Great charts. charts. Yeah, yeah, I love them. Yep. To your point, Christina, wearables is now twelve percent, and of course, the rumor is, and we're going to talk about this in, in a second, that Apple is about to release right. augmented reality glasses, another another category of wearable. So it'll be watch, AirPods, and now glasses. Uh, that could end up 
meaning that wearables become as important as iPhone. Uh, I'm thrilled that the Mac is doing well because their new chips, I think they're going to eat the world. I think that uh, their new chips are so good that it, they've got everybody else in retreat. Uh, Horace Daydu thinks that Apple itself was surprised how how strong those chips are. Really? Uh, and now the whole, yeah, and the whole company now is thinking, oh boy, what can we do with this kind of power? Yeah, I mean, essentially, these were overpowered chips designed for an iPhone and iPad. I always, I got the iPad Pro, and I thought, this has this chip is much more powerful than I'll ever need to run iPad software. And of course, that was the chip that they showed off at the with the developer edition. And now we've got the M1, and it's just the beginning of this is going to be a very interesting year for Apple with their microprocessors. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be an Apple fanboy. Um, but it's hard at this point to look at any other. They're not the number one phone maker in the world, you know. No, not by long shot. Not by long shot. <laughs> Samsung, Huawei, bigger. Um, Whenever antitrust comes up, Tim Cook always says there's no market in which we have the dominant right. uh, position, right? E except of course the App Store, and that they're well, that's, that's when they're, they're in trouble for. There is one way they dominate in every market they're in, and that's in. Revenue, Profits. profit per share, yeah, profit yep. per item. Um, also, they they've managed to to take the top quintile of the population, the richest people in the world, and they're serving them, uh, which is also not a bad place to be. They'll never advertise that, but that's what they're that's what they're aiming for. Yeah, they want the the rich people. I think Apple's really like the BMW of the phone world, like yeah. somewhat accessible to a lot of people, super high profit margins, rock solid brand. <clears throat> it's aspirational forever. luxury. It's always been that way, Perfect. right? It's aspirational yes. luxury, right? Like it, it's the sort of thing that Are it's you saying not it's that. The, the Jordan off whites of computing? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. The Jordan off whites of computing uh, would be like those stupid, like Nokia used to own the company that made like those oh, yeah. super expensive phones. Like the, 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 bejeweled, have, the bejeweled phones. Yeah, yeah. That, that no one has any reason to buy that are dumb or like the the $1,200 Blackberries that they used to sell to to people in the UAE. No, um, Apple, I think BMW or, is, is a perfect uh, corollary, right? And then they have different levels too because you can get in at lower levels. Like you can get a BMW. W3 series, or you can get right. um, a, a pre-owned, but still be part of the family. Um, and and you can go all the way up to spending ridiculous sums of money on, you know, a, a Mac Pro. Um, but, but it's aspirational, right? Like it's aspirational luxury. It's going to, it's going to by definition count, count out a certain sector of the populace. Um, although I do think this is where AirPods have been and, and the Apple Watch, for that matter, too, have been fairly brilliant, is that if you look at them in their sector, certainly you can find lower cost devices, but not that much lower cost. And when you look at it from a quality comparison standpoint, you really can't do much better. I mean, it's, it's we're finally four years after AirPods. There are finally some competitors in the sub $150 space that could be as good as AirPods, even if you're not using them with an iPhone. Yeah. Um, the Apple Watch, especially when you can get kind of like the, the the two hundred dollars space. I don't think there's anything. Again, you have to have an iPhone, so that is a, a knock they against. They clobbered. Them, but they clobbered everybody else. They did. They did. Yeah. Like there being there. Be, I, I wouldn't recommend somebody to get a Fitbit. The only person who I've recently, who and by recently I mean in the last couple of years that I've bought a Fitbit for, has been my my parents. And the reason there is that they have Rolexes, and I've come really close to getting my mom an Apple Watch a number of times. You know, but like, wait a minute. So she wears a Rolex and her Fitbit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess you would. So, so, as as right. one and, does. Yeah. Right. And so, but, but, you know, but I, I have actually thought a number of times about getting her an Apple Watch. And it's just been a weird thing in my mind, even though the Rolexes are very old. It's one of those things where you're like, so, okay, Mom, you could but, give me the Rolex and well, here's an Apple Watch. 100%. But, but like, um, <laughs> but, you know, that, that does seem like a weird trade to make, right? Like, that seems like a weird, like, like value trade to make. But, but honestly, that, if you're talking pure functionality, the Apple Watch kicks the Rolex's butt. It's not agreed. as pretty, not as expensive, not as right. high status. Right, right, exactly. And so, yeah, but at this point, I mean, I think it's interesting that obviously I think the phones and the computers especially, right? The computers are really where there's the highest barrier to entry, but it's still aspirational. But for the accessories, for the wearables, like, you know, again, like that's kind of why I compared the, Air, um, the AirPods to the iPod because that really was the first hit mass 
adoption Apple product that they had. By the time they, in 2003, the time, by the time they had the USB 30 pin connector, it was available for Windows. You know, that thing sold like hotcakes. You couldn't, you know, they were selling way more of them, you know, for, for Windows users than for Mac users. And it, it created a whole market and, and took over an entire industry and led to, you know, frankly, the Apple that we have today. And I think that the AirPods are doing the same thing um, kind of, you know, 15, uh, 17 years, 18 years later. Wow. Um, but, you know, to, to Alex's point, it is kind of a BMW thing and that they're, they don't go after the bottom barrel thing. They're not going after Chromebooks. They're not going after the real entry level, like, you know, cheapest you can do. Like they want to have a high margin. They want to have a quality standard, but it is designed in a way where, okay, you might not be able to be 100% in the Apple ecosystem, but they do make it possible for people to dip their toe in. And then the hope, as Philip was pointing out earlier, is that once you start to get in, you will become fully immersed, including all the services. And, you know, a, you will be like a, me where yeah. where your life is. I you hate know. it. I go kicking and screaming, but the Apple ecosystem does work. And yep. it yes. sucks you in. And I hate it. I don't want to be an ecosystem uh, advocate. The, the interesting but, thing uh, going on in India where – you know the the next biggest market after china and for a long time people said well apple is going to fail if they don't make a low cost phone that they can sell to india and you know for a while what they did is is sold used phones to india uh but really what they did is they they kept the phone they kept the price the same and they waited for indians to get rich enough to afford them right and, uh, and the and other now thing they did because india has very strong tariffs is they it's started sort of manufacturing. manufacturing in India, yeah. same thing with Brazil. And in fact, there's, there were stories this week that Apple seems to be starting to make a concerted effort to move out of China for a lot of its assembly. They've been working uh, on that Not the only company doing that. Yeah. A lot of companies are working on that. And I, yep. I think uh, the, the bringing about the Indian market is really important. We're going to be talking more about the Indian tech scene uh, over the next 10 years than I think people currently realize. Because as we've seen with the Ant Financial IPO, recent kind of Chinese government regulation, I, I think the era of watching China become the uh, the almost de facto global leader in things like AI and so forth will slow. And I think the Indian, US, uh, and then North American market are going to kind of be the top three, uh, which is not what I thought was thought was going to be the case a couple of years ago when the Chinese venture capital scene was the biggest in the world. Yeah. And, what and happened there? Did the Chinese government decide that they didn't want to be a capitalist system? So they looked at, at, at Jack Ma and they looked at Ant and they said, yeah, no. Because uh, for a long time, he kind of had a free reign, right? But they... Yeah. Too much power in private hands, though. They don't want that. No. Yeah. So that's and the it's, risk. It's not Capitalism good is good in a lot of ways. It's good for the economy. It's 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 good for the country, but it's not good if you lose control, as we have in the United States, frankly, <laughs> to the big companies. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I currently work for a Fortune 10 company, Leah, so I certainly couldn't comment on that. And, uh, Christina works for a Fortune 2 company, so she can't comment right. on that. But you and Philip can, can pop off. Right as now. a little You'll guy, uh, yeah, I wish I were a big guy. Apple's profit, look at this, $28.8 billion. That's almost $10 billion a month. That's unbelievable. Believable and way beyond Surreal. anything they've done before. 